Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I have a small unboxing to share with you today. This is from Van S. Pens. Let's take a look. It's just a few things, but I always like seeing what people get on their pen type orders. So let me take you along with mine and let's get this box open. Okay, here we are. This is quite small. And you probably won't be surprised to see a new pen, even though I've always vowed I'm not going to buy any more pens. This is the um, Platinum Preppy in the 0 0.3 nib size. This is only a $6 pen. Now, do I need another fountain pen? No, I definitely don't. But let me explain. The reason I bought this is I was watching some videos, as I often do. I always like to get some inspiration on my fountain pen hobby. And I happen to be watching Jana Lyon. And she does some really neat watercolor work. She was doing that, um, what is that link where you're sharing how you got in the fountain pen journey? It started with Simona and Leanne Likes, I believe. Anyway, I would like to do that, yeah. But I was watching hers, and she talked about getting into the fountain pen journey, um, sort of with these platinum preppies. And she used it with her watercoloring for outline, and then she would go back and watercolor it. So I decided I'd try that. I love watercolor. Some of my favorite washi tape features, watercolored, designs um, my friend Kim um, in the UK first sent me. So anyway, Jana had this and I thought, okay, I'll try it. It does come, oh, let's see, I don't even know how to open this. Oh, there we go. It comes with a cartridge and the cartridge matches the color of your pen selection. I could have gotten black, but I wanted to try um, the green. I just thought it was a pretty spring green. It says here that it's fine. 0 0.3 um, but I will save this for another time what I want to do is put in this carbon ink cartridge that is made by platinum and this is supposed to be a waterproof ink so I can do my little artsy designs with a waterproof ink and then I can get out my little watercolor palette which is very small I think there's like eight colors in it it's a beginner's one and um, I just want to play around with that. I, I think it's fun. I love how it looks. And to me, that seems like a fun little side uh, detour to the fountain pen world and hobby. Let me play around with that and I'll be right back. In case I totally messed that up, I wanted to turn it off. It looks like I've got some ink here working down into the feed. I did just recently give away three pens. Um, my three oldest grandkids um, like trying new things. I gave them one of those shark fountain pens a while ago and I want to kind of um, give them some other experiences. <clears throat> They're getting a little bit older. They're 12, 10 and a half, and about seven and a half. So I gave them um, a Lamy, a Twisby, my Conklin, so they could try a little bit of a different fountain pen experience. Ooh, okay, here we go. So anyway, I felt like I could buy a $6 pen since I made room. This is the Corona paper, I think. The idea is that, you know, I would draw something. Here's a little basic coffee mug and then fill it in with some fountain pen, or not fountain pen, but um, watercolors. I generally go with a broad nib, so this will be different. And I'm thinking I should probably dig up some watercolor paper in order for that experiment to go a little more favorable. And then the other thing is this Moss Green by Papier Poon. I thought we could swatch this together. Okay, I have my little jar of coffee beans. I like to insert my sample vials into that to help hold them steady while I'm getting a little 
swatch out. Somebody did that idea on YouTube a while back when I first got into this little hobby and it has worked pretty well. I wish I could remember where I got the idea. I don't. This is a kind of green that really appeals to me. Um, a mossy type green, earthy, kind of maybe a color that you would think looks like it's mixed with some brown. My first impression right there is pretty favorable. I love that pooling color and it seems like that's a little bit lighter maybe. Maybe I'll add just a tiny bit more. And of course, the, you know, the real test is how it works in your pen. I've come to realize that just because you like this neat looking big swatch doesn't mean you're gonna like it in the pen. I chose this Papier Plume one, um, this moss green again, because the type of green it is and because I have not tried, as far as I know, this brand of ink. And I'm kind of curious about uh, some other companies that have inks that I haven't experimented with yet. That's looking really nice. I just had a slight interruption. The um, construction guy came through and I forgot my train of thought. Uh, so wanting to try new inks from different companies. I think that's the main point. And just trying to find a couple more varieties in my favorite go-to color, which I'd say a lot of times is a green. So let me find a pen and we will try it out, see how it actually looks as writing. Okay, I decided to do my Caveco Dark Olive. And this is a double broad. And it would not be a complete experience without getting some ink on my fingers. So let's write this out. Let's see how it feels. I just did a quick test on the Corona paper and it seems to be flowing. So this is Papier Plume uh, Moss Green. I don't know if I said because of the interruptions going on around here, but I believe the Van S site said this had a wet flow. Anytime I see that a ink has a wet flow, I want to try it. But I know we all have different preferences. So for me, a wet flow is a very fun writing experience. Um, this is the Caveco. I think it's called Dark Olive, not just Olive. Dark Olive, and it's double broad. And this is really flowing quite quite gushy. The water, or not the water, but the ink looks watery. It looks like it's kind of, you know, pooling on the paper. It seems like there is a bit of shading. In this book, I'm just kind of maybe trying to say basically what the ink is, what the pen is, and what my first impressions are, and then later I will evaluate it a little more thoroughly after writing with it for a bit. This is the Cosmo Air Light. I'd say it is a really good combination. I'm, I'm liking this shade of green. Kind of makes me think of split pea soup. But it really is a nice wet flow. All the, all the angles are working. I will try it on the Tomoe River and also the um, regalia paper. I am really liking the brownish undertone to this ink. I hope you can see it in the pooling color there. This is on the Tomoe River paper, and it seems a little bit like the writing is slightly lighter. I wonder if I can switch this without smudging it too much. Seems a little deeper in color in the Cosmo Air, at least in the writing, and just slightly more maybe yellowed <clears throat> on the Tomoe River. Honestly, I 
don't know that I'm seeing a ton of shading, but there does seem to be a certain element of it to that. Shading is one of my favorite ink aspects, which I have mentioned before. What do you like? Are you a sheener? Are you a shimmer person? Do you like just a solid color ink? Okay, here we are on the Regalia paper. I am really liking this paper. I have said that before. Please consider trying it if you're looking for something similar to um, Cosmo Airlight. Over here, just as a side note, this is Noodler's L. Lawrence. I have a very small little swatch there that I did with the end of a pen. Um, it's a bit bigger one. I put it next to this because I thought maybe these would be kind of similar. This, in comparison, is uh, quite a bit lighter. Of course, they're two different inks and all that, but they did rather remind me of each other. But just the tones in that really appeal to me. You can see it maybe getting just a little more faint as the writing has moved along. Um, this feels so smooth, though. I really like how it works on the regalia, and with this wider background of this brighter page color, it makes this um, pop. I'll do it here as well, next to the L. Lawrence. I started out with like this really organized system, and as is typical for me, I get in a hurry, and I don't think things through. I forget what my system is. <laughs> So I just kind of knew whatever. I can see why others are constantly switching their method of swatching. It's, it's, for me, it's just hard to stay um, going in one direction with this. I kind of I like that when that pools in a area. Gives some really neat dimension. Okay, and again, same same thing, just a different paper. Voice term I can never spell properly. Okay, so um, what are we doing here? This is papier plume. I keep wanting to say green moss, but it's moss green. And again, it's in the Caveco Dark Olive Double Broad. I guess this would be a good place to consider doing a chromatography thing and just kind of see what all colors are in this. The real test will be the long-term writing. How do I like this pen and ink together? I'll probably try it in another pen as well, but just seeing how that ink actually works in a few different pens will be a good um, determining factor. Seems smooth. And the color seems a bit richer on this creamy color. I guess that kind of makes sense. Okay, here is the chromatography. It may still be rising slightly as we speak. Appears to be. There's just a lot of um, a lot of yellow. Very interesting. But they kind of, I mean, you know, you you see it here, and then it seems like your eyes kind of, your brain registers that as obviously being in there. More yellow than I thought, and actually a lot more of this grayish brown than I imagined we would see. So, just to recap, this is the Loish term. This is the Regalia. Loving the depth there. This is the Tomoe River paper. And then the Cosmo Air always just gives me what I feel like is a more steady hand. 
So I'm, I'm drawn to that in Regalia, but they, they kind of all are really fun to write with. I'm really eager to play around with this more. This may, this may be going on my list of ink bottles to obtain. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and we will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.